And then for the last speaker on my list from the EFDD, Mr. Carver. Thank you, Chair. I really wanted to pick up on um, Ms. Finesco's point and take it a stage further and ask how the current friction between Gulf states and Qatar specifically affects the interest, their, those countries' interests in Libya uh, that you've alluded to. And also I wanted to go, go on and ask, I really want your comments on the influence of the Muslim Brotherhood in Libya and whether that influence affects Libyan relations with Gulf countries. Thank you. Let me briefly touch on the, on the other questions. The question of uh, financing Muslim brothers uh, and uh, the effect of the Gulf, uh, Gulf crisis. Now, the, um, there is an arms embargo. Uh, and this is, uh, you see, if you want to improve the situation, you always ask what incentives and what leverages do you have. Incentive is, of course, money. Yeah? So you finance something. However, to be quite frank, this is a rich country. I am not one of those who always say, listen, give us money or so, yeah, because this country is rich. They have still 60 billion U.S. dollars as assets. That's why, I mean, they could finance everything themselves. They do not need European taxpayers' money here to finance these things, with the exception of humanitarian, uh, humanitarian efforts. Because people are dying, then money has to go in. If the government is not willing or able to do it, then the international community has to replace this unwillingness or this inability. But not for all other things. In principle, they do not need money. Um, so the, it, it's very often for the, for, for the public, uh, European, the famous 100 million or so. Yeah, but what is done with the famous 100 million? And why can the Libyans themselves don't do it? I mean, they have money, and they have 1 million soon by end of the year, barrel per day in oil revenues, and they should be uh, brought to a point where they can do it uh, themselves. Now, the, the, the money is one thing. The arms embargo to, to uh, encourage the building up of security uh, structures like police by lifting or having exemptions from the arms embargo. Now, not that Libya is short of weapons. There are 26 million weapons in the country. These are estimates of uh, the, our mine action people, the UN UNMAS, 26 million pieces of weapons in a with a population of 6 million. Now, every baby, when one's born, gets already three or four weapons here. Now, but anyhow, the weapons embargo, to have modern weapons, the lifting, the exemption from weapons embargo by structured, supervised, within the framework of human, human rights, vetted army, army, this is something where there is a, there is a real leverage. The problem with the, now with the Gulf crisis and the, um, and, and the question of the, uh, of the Muslim brothers is that even if I said that most of the problems is oil and money and wealth sharing, there is also a religious element. It's not very strong, but there are member states like the Emirates, like Egypt, who have a very strong anti-Muslim brother agenda. This reflects on our work because we are talking to everybody, even those who are in ter on terror lists uh, in, in other countries. We talk, of course, to Muslim brothers. Muslim brothers, the party of the Muslim brothers, where in the, in the, in the Libyan political dialogue even. Now we have a new list of, of terrorists. They belong to our, uh, to, to our uh, clientele, so to say, with whom we continue and have to continue to talk. Our terror list is very clear. This is the terror list of the United Nations and not the terror list of the EU or the Egyptians or the Emirates or others. And this is uh, Islamic State, Ansar al-Sharia, Al-Qaeda and, uh, and these uh, type of organizations. It is not uh, the jihadist militias. How, how shall we encourage militias, even if they are jihadists or on the terror list, to demobilize and disarm if we put them on a terrorist and cannot talk to them. No, we will continue. This is mediation in order to talk to them. This includes also uh, the Muslim brothers knowing the situation of the Gulf, uh, which, which was created by the mar marginalization of Qatar, does not make things easier. However, if you do this in a clear way, and I'm just coming from Egypt, the country who has the Muslim brothers, uh, which has the Muslim brothers on the terror list, and I tell them in a very transparent way that I will continue to talk to the Muslim brothers 
that is not a big protest because, of course, they need also somebody who is reaching out to those they, they cannot talk to or they have, have on the, on the terror list.